Now, if you suffer from incontinence, you're not alone, and there is actually a way to get help. And our very own CT style reporter, Meg Yost, is here with more. Thank you, Ryan. 17 to 30 million people in the U.S. suffer from some sort of bladder dysfunction. It's not only embarrassing, but it can also make doing some of the most simple things in life difficult. Thankfully, many are finding relief with a pacemaker for the bladder. Check it out. I just love to help people. I will do anything to help anybody. That's just me. Every week, Lori Tompkins helps feed more than 500 families in the Plainville region through her church's food pantry. I've been the director for over six years now. But there was something getting in the way of her doing her job. I first started having incontinence issues probably about um, 20 years ago. And it's been ongoing and ongoing. Lori had two surgeries to try and fix the problem. When that didn't work, she tried medication, but to no avail. It got to a point where my bladder would only hold eight ounces of fluid. Running the food distribution that I do, the food pantry that I run, I have to interact with the people a lot. And I'd have to keep running to the bathroom. Wait, can you hold that thought? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't working and something had to be done. That's when Lori's doctor at the hospital central Connecticut told her about the intersim device, which works by addressing one possible cause of overactive bladder, miscommunication between the bladder muscle and the nervous system. It's believed that a bladder becomes overactive when the sacral nerves misfire, telling the organ to empty even when there's nothing in it. The inner stem is implanted underneath the skin in the lower back. It delivers mild stimulation to the nerves, reducing the signals that cause the bladder to contract. Right after I had the device implanted, I noticed a difference right away. I was able to sleep all night long because I was getting up two or three times in the night, maybe four or five even sometimes. Using this remote, Lori can turn her inner stem on or off and adjust the stimulation level. This goes where the interstim is, and now this is talking to the unit. Come on, baby girl. For Lori, the device on, has given her girl. peace of mind that Come she on, hasn't experienced girl. in years. I couldn't do anything without oh, having to stop I what I was girl. doing and run to the bathroom. Yeah. It's really changed my life. It's okay, baby girl. A small device yes, with girl. big results. Yes, For CT girl. Style, I'm Megan Yost. Yeah. I'm here now with Lori's doctor, Elena Tunitsky. Welcome here to CT Style. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, and, and she is from Hartford Healthcare and soon a uh, practice of the Hospital of Central Connecticut. So I have to mention, Lori obviously doing great work in the community uh, and, and helping so many people. So this has to be very difficult for her on an everyday basis. How, how do you think it's changed her life? I mean, we, we saw it there in, in the segment, but from a doctor's pr perspective, how did it change her life? Um, so patients come to me with complaints of urinary frequency and urgency and as Lori mentioned some patients have to run to the bathroom as often as every hour mm. and get up at night three to four times a night obviously this interferes with their life their uh, with their social life with their work their even, family, even yeah. exercising family yeah. and it's really embarrassing mm -hmm. so this infringes on their life in a, in a great way. Well, it's, it's great that you're able to help all of these patients. When, when do you think somebody should say, hey, I need to go see a doctor about this and, 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 and really take it seriously? I think at any point, really, if somebody, if, if, if this interferes with your life to the point that you have to wear incontinence pads or you're limiting your social life or any of your activities, mm -hmm. It's time to seek right. care well, and at least speak to somebody. Which is where you come in and, and talk a little bit more um, about this technology, the Interstim, if, if you don't mind holding it up for sure. our viewers to sort of tell us about the, the uh, actual um, surgery and the installation and, and recovery time. Yes. So the, while it is done in the operating room, it is an outpatient procedure with really minimal sedation, uh, no general anesthesia, and the patient goes home the same day. Oh. It does require... Uh, two-step procedure. So the first step is uh, a testing phase. It's kind of unique to this particular procedure. Mm -hmm. There's really no medical procedures where you're allowed to test it out. Test it. Um, so in the first part, this um, tip of the electrode goes to the to the nerve in the back using an X-ray machine mm -hmm. um, to visualize it. And then this, instead of connected to the battery, it's connected to a small device that the patient wears on her belt. Um, and uh, she records her symptoms. Mm -hmm. If she feels that the, this is working for her, then we get back in about two weeks and implant this in the area in the buttock. Um, mm -hmm. So not, this does not go in your bladder. It goes externally and, um, 
I mean, un underneath the skin, sure. uh, above the muscle. But not through the bladder. Would not, not through yeah. the bladder. And, and and it's great because you have more information about this actually in a in a seminar. It's coming up May 18th. It's in Plainville. So make sure that you guys uh, check that out. Doc, thank you so much for joining us thank here today you. on thank CG you for Style. And it's me. it's great work that you're doing, able to change people's lives. And uh, now we're going to send things back over to Megan. If you'd like to attend the Hospital of Central Connecticut's educational program on urinary incontinence, call 1-855-HHC-HERE or visit thocc.org slash incontinence.